I'm Carol Heft. This is the uh, exhibition called Discord and Mercy at the Blue Mountain Gallery. Um, we'll be here till uh, April 20th. Uh, and I'm glad to have a little opportunity to talk about it um, for people that haven't been able to visit the gallery. The, there's basically two themes in this exhibit uh, that relate to, in a way, two different perhaps styles, if you will, but they really are related. Uh, the first part, I originally was going to title this show Bureaucracy, because a few years ago, since I'm 70 years old, I had to uh, apply for Medicare. And the idea of uh, <clears throat> filling out forms and having to talk to various organizations and go to the Social Security office, if any of you have had to do that, you know what I mean. Uh, the idea of uh, feeling frustrated about trying to get something done, a goal, uh, and the frustration of the people that are there to help you and, and all that, and it just kind of felt like uh, a labyrinth. So some of these works, including this painting, reflect that in kind of a good-natured way, I think. It's, it's about frustration, but it's um, with, a, with a kind of humor uh, about it. So we see people turning into machines and boxes and so on, and a lot of this came is derived from art history, uh, particularly looking at Peter Bruegel, the elder, and his whole, the whole Bruegel family and uh, also Hieronymus Bosch, and illuminated manuscripts also, which I'll talk about in a minute. So uh, this is kind of a very similar version of, or a, a kin cousin to this idea. The, uh, the stairways <laughs> and the parts of people and just, you know, where is it leading to? And it seems to be going somewhere, but we don't know where. And, um, the feeling of being entrapped in a way in a machine that you really don't have much control of but is that you need to get access to something in order to survive. So that's the frustration of bureaucracy. The other part of the, <clears throat> the second sort of sub-theme in a way is related because it deals with frustration. Um, the title Discord. Uh, the idea of um, the, the, the condition of the world now, there's quite a bit of um, violence, uh, war, and families being torn apart, people uh, feeling helpless and, and be, being helpless. That has to do with circumstances, but also, in a sense, the intimacy of family relationships that um, are, are part of that, but also separate in a way. So there's a kind of pain in these drawings, I think, that maybe doesn't exist in some of the bureaucracy images because they're so uh, goofy in a way, you know, with people turning into things and um, just uh, co comical positions that they're in and, and that kind of thing. Maybe this uh, drawing over here can really exemplify that. This is a big drawing um, that I worked on over many months. It's a combination of pencil and pen and ink. And uh, I mean, part of it was just I really love figure drawing. And so the idea of trying to <laughs> depict somebody with their foot towards us 
is, was a real challenge and fun for me. Uh, but also just thinking of things that were around me. You know, when I teach drawing, we have certain props that are uh, used in the, in the studio, like this chair or lamps or uh, pedestals. And also, again, if you look at uh, Bruegel's drawings, they're full of things like barrels with people coming out of them or, or something that you can't quite identify coming out of a container. And so uh, ladders don't know where they're going. And then this guy appeared up here, this individual. So part of it is like almost like automatic drawing where you start making marks and drawing something. And then I would look at it and see, well, that looks kind of like a figure. So some of it is deliberate, like I'm going to put this figure here that's reclining and foreshortened. And then some of it is, well, that kind of starts looking like that next to it. And then it's a lot of looking. I do spend a lot more time actually looking than drawing when I'm working because I want the drawing to sort of tell me what to do. And uh, so these smaller works, I mean, the scale, the scale is different. This, uh, these two, well, this is a study for a painting. I've also been using different kind of media. I sometimes will work on a painting or drawing, take a picture of it, um, and print it out and then work over it with either colored pencil or uh, oil pastels or something that uh, will enable me to make revisions and visualize them without having to revise the larger, the larger work. And then I wind up with like a series or a body of work based on one or two themes, which I really enjoy too. I started out as a printmaker. I was lucky enough to go to a high school where they had a lithography press and an etching press and had a wonderful teacher named Gary Stanton who really encouraged me. So that there's a printerly quality to my work, I think. And maybe you can see it in these also. Uh, this was worked on over many months. Um, I find it, I've, I've been able to figure out how to stop and start without something getting so cold that I can't hook back into it. I've had to do that because of my work schedule. So um, that has given me a different kind of perspective when I'm working. I get, to, I get distance from my work through time uh, because I can't work on it consecutively for three days or four days in a row, for example. And through space also, because I take photographs and I post them on Facebook, which I uh, really appreciate being able to do. And then it gives me actually more distance because when you look at a small image on the screen, it's, it's like walking back from it. You get to see the composition differently. So with these, they're a little smaller than the drawing we just looked at a minute ago. Uh, but the scale is actually similar. The scale meaning the, the size of the marks and the size of the um, shapes, the forms, related to the size of the picture plane. That's something that they have in common. And, and they're very busy. I was also thinking about illuminated manuscripts and the sort of precious quality of, of those <clears throat> books. Uh, because it's kind of a departure for me, this, this amount of detail and concentration and compression. So um, that's how I originally visualized this whole show. And I, when I teach, we do a lot of figure drawing. I love drawing the figure. Um, and that kind of also related to the other theme uh, of families, uh, interactions intergenerational interactions, frustration of trying to connect with people and communicate. And the other side of that, which is the relentless and resilient effort to do so, that that's where the hope comes in terms of mercy. So uh, I just maybe will look with you at one or two more things here. Um, for example, this is another uh, small version of one of these bureaucracy and you know you could look at this for a long time <laughs> if you want to and keep seeing things there's this 
And that's how I worked on it. I, I, look, I worked on it for a long time. I kept seeing things and putting things in. The drawing was telling me kind of what to do in terms of, well, maybe there's another figure back there, or maybe this is a pipe, or maybe, that's, maybe these are legs coming out of a box, which I certainly didn't make up. There's plenty of surreal and um, strange imagery that is fantastical. If you study art history, it's just uh, fabulous. These drawings come from uh, working with my students in the classroom. I always, that's my teaching style. I draw along with the students. Um, I draw with them for a little while, then I walk around and talk to them about their drawings. So uh, some of them were done from photos because during, well, if you're teaching online with Zoom, that's what you do. But uh, most of the time, I, I really like working from live models. I don't use models for these paintings, though, of course, in my studio. So thank you very much for spending a few minutes with me today. And uh, thank you, Odell. And I hope you are able to come and see the exhibit.